Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the show where we try to answer life's questions one time. Nope, three, two, one. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the show where uh, two guys who sort of know some stuff try to figure life out one drink at a time. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. And we are so excited to have you back. It's May at the uh, time of recording, and, or time that this will go live anyway. And uh, hopefully your spring is uh, doing well. So how you doing, Sean? Um, you know, I'm not too bad. Providing that everything works out the way it should, I should be having uh, some some fresh plants in the soil to not be so cryptic about my, my professional life, but I should also have them uh, in my garden as well by now. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I am... I'm busy enough, but and yet I feel like I'm on top of it. So the plates are spinning, but the sticks are steady. All right, I just, I'll I take just came that. up. I'll I just that. came up with that. I'm I'm quite proud, pleased with that. So, uh, and one of the things we do, the reason why it's called Two Brains One Bottle, is that we each have a bottle in front of us, uh, and mine is Four Roses Small Batch Select, which I think we may have reviewed in the past. I don't know, but uh, it's it's delightful. It's the nice amber color. It has on the nose. It's it's weird because like the nose has raspberries and and clove and nutmeg, you know, and the, the baking spices. But on the tongue, I took a little snip sip here, and it switches from raspberries to apricot. I mean, there's still berries there, but suddenly, ap I don't know where apricot comes from all of a sudden, but there it is. And then you get the also uh, light oak and, and vanilla. What are you drinking, senor? I have got in front of me uh, Jay Rieger, Rieger uh, and Company sure. Extra Fine <laughs> Kansas City Whiskey, established in 1887. Hey, 46% alcohol by volume, 92 proof. This is from Kansas City, Missouri. Nice. You said 92 proof. I actually am uh, 52 proof, or 52 uh, APV on this, 104 proof. 104 proof. Okay, so that is... 52. Yes, so I'm 46%. Which, I haven't had a over 50 um, bourbon, I guess, in a while, because this is it's hitting a little different, but that's okay. This is weird. They call it a small batch select because it's literally 10 recipes that have been combined. They combine two mash bills with five proprietary yeast strains to create 10 distinct bourbon recipes and that then they just combine them to give all these different you know notes and things unlike our last episode in april where um i had the kilburn irish whiskey that had unexpected layers to it in a pleasant way this is i'm not getting layers so much as i am just getting i feel like i'm in the middle of a bunch of notes and flavors as opposed to going down strata you know what i mean yeah, yeah, it feels a little more gradient. Right, like everything is right, up, like you taste it. There's everything, everything I just said about it. It's right there on, on the tongue, it's right there. There's no development, there's there's no, you know, like, um, what's the word, Bl blossoming or blooming of, of other things. Um, I, I, I'm drinking a mini, because again, I was in a hurry, but... The uh, the seven the seven fifty milliliter of this at Total Wine is forty two bucks. So I gotta say, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, that's one and three quarter liters. Wow, they sell. Wait, how much more is that? Seven hundred fifty milliliters is so it's like two, two of those. All right, the okay the seven okay the seven fifty milliliter of this is. Basically twenty bucks. I'm okay with that price. That's a fifth. That's yeah. a normal standard bottle. Right. Um, I, I I guess they sell the Four Roses bourbon in just a big old here's a party bottle. But I I I'm okay at twenty bucks for the the fifth. Um, it's I don't know. It it's supposed to be. I think the the I think the the proof is taken away from all the things they're trying to do with it. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. I, I I think that the 10 recipe thing 
Uh, it's aged a minimum of six to seven years, whereas the... And I, I just don't... I don't know. I don't taste all the love that, that supposedly they put into this. All the work. Non-chill filtered. Um... You know more about me that about non-chill filtered than I do. What it, what makes non-chill filtered like desirable? Uh, that would be chill filtering versus non-chill filtering. Ah, oh, here we go. Apparently, the small batch select does not combine all ten. It they they choose six and mingle them of the ten recipes. And each each is aged a minimum of six years, so does that mean like it could be different depending on which six they pick? Uh, does it are, are your bottles batch numbered? Um, <coughs> sorry, yeah, and there's different uh, kinds of there's different yeasts li listed with uh, letters. And each yeast gives a different thing, like um, delicate fruit, slight spice, rich fruit, floral essence, or herbal notes. There's two different mash bills. One has higher corn but lower rye, uh, and the other one is the opposite, and then they both have 5% malted barley. I just, I think it's the rye forward for me that's that's kind of overpowering everything. It's I, I would much rather have, be drinking the Kilburn again. Um... So what I'm getting from this is candy corn, molasses, brown sugar, and if we're talking darker stone fruit, over-sugared, fruity fruit notes, mm -hmm. we're more in the cranberry range than pomegranate, and then I got just overwhelming oatmeal and brown sugar. But to start answering your question about <laughs> uh, chill filtration, it's... Actually, before you get into that real quick, sorry, what are you drinking again? I'm drinking the Jay Rieger's Kansas City Whiskey. Right. Okay. Sorry. And this is a blend, from what I can right. tell. Let me go back here. Yes, it is a straight. It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskey, light corn whiskey, and straight rye whiskey, all aged at least four years, as well as a small amount of fifteen-year-old Oloroso sherry from the Williams and Humber Bodega in Jerez. Uh, or Jerez. Bottled in ninety-two proof, Kansas City whiskey is well balanced. Smooth and slightly sweet. It's beautiful when served neater on the rocks, but also works well in a classic bourbon or rye-based cocktails like the Horse Feather Manhattan or Old Fashioned. I think if you're expecting rye spice out of this, you're going to be excited at the smell and disappointed in the taste. If you are expecting bourbon, you're going to be very, very happy. I am so fucking bored with this Goddamn brown sugar, oatmeal, bourbon note. God fucking kill me. Right. I was... I was excited about the sherry. But for the amount that it tastes in the glass, I would draw a comparison to having had sherry in a glass the night before. And then you used that old glass in the morning to pour your whiskey <clears throat> into. And then right. you drink that. That's... That's a shame. Like, damn it sounds disappointing. Like a... I, I appreciate the 46%. Uh, it's there. That's absolutely there. Um, it is also... But because it's also 46%, I'm going to leave it sit out. I'm going to hope that the... Brown sugar note dissipates, but even from well beyond the glass, it's brown sugar, it's vanilla, it is bourbon, and, and not a whole lot of uh, Oloroso, not a whole lot of sherry, not a whole lot of, of, of any other note. Well, that's you know interesting. What? I added... Oh, go ahead. But, but the great thing about bourbons is they work wonderful in coffee based and coffee hmm. uh so this would be perfect in a um irish coffee i know making an american coffee 
And I think you add a little bit of whipped cream to that. <laughs> sprinkle a cinnamon. And hear me out. A pinch of salt. Well, salt makes everything a little bit better. You know, maybe some shaved cocoa nibs. Now you're talking a party. Now you're talking a drink. Now we're now we're utilizing all of its weaknesses and shoving them back, and we're just bringing forward the strengths, and we're accentuating them, and we're com- we're building in contrast to it. So we're using it as an ingredient instead of making it the star. This is not a right. star whiskey, uh, unlike the Kansas City Star, which is the news publication out here uh, uh-huh. or press publication. Um, it's it's not a star player. It is it's. It's I'm for glad, a mixed drink. I, I'm glad it's sporting KC, right. but it's kind of a miss for me. I I will be keeping it around because you. When it. I'll I'll be keeping <laughs> it around when some schmuck says I want a shot, and they say, "How about we just enjoy a whiskey together?" And it's his first time, you know, really just sitting down and easing up off of the shots. This is a right. great transitional whiskey. To get you into sounds, start enjoying the, the the lighter appreciation parts of whiskey. That's what I'll say like about it. That's a, a nice. It way sounds to like it. it's a good whiskey when you've already been drinking. It's a great whiskey if you're if you're. Uh, oh, if somebody says, "Hey, I want a whiskey Coke or a whiskey Dr Pepper," I'd say, "Hey, let me give you this instead. I'll right. pour it on ice, and I'll give you like a splash of milk in it. Fucking." That it will be just, oh, that is perfect. Or, right oh, hot chocolate in that. It's over. It's game over. That's the. That's a great cocktail. I'm yes. already. I'm already with it in my mind. Like I'm. Okay. All I have to do you're is ready, now, you're ready for winter already. All I have to do <laughs> is now like fucking film it and get it up and. Right. Oh, and just adjust uh, I, a couple things, but I could see this used well. Um, I won't be. I won't be going back to this this episode, so I'm going to move it aside for something Glitter. that I am enjoying, which is the Nika. There you go. <laughs> um, and if you listened to our last episode, you heard him talk about the Nika, and it's lovely and balanced and lovely. Yeah. Um, this, oh, excuse me, the Four Roses. The weird. I added a couple drops of of water to it just to see if anything opened up, and it suddenly became the most. Acerbic concentrated candied orange zest, like you 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 ruined making candied orange peel. You know, oh peel. no! I didn't mean zest. I meant peel. You ru- like you over overcooked your orange peel. Oh, it's and that then, acrid burnt sugar. And then you sugar. drank, yeah. And then you let it cool and you drank the liquid. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's just like all of a sudden, it's like that's it. It's overwhelming. There it is. Boom. That and the oils, and I'm just like. Mm. I, I want to say maybe mix it. What, what's the the whiskey drink that's supposed to have a like orange in it? An old fashioned. It. I thought that was cherry. Uh, or is that a sidecar? Manhattan. Manhattan. Okay, so this right here Manhattan's would make it interesting. Rye usually, I think. Right. This this because it's also rye forward. This would make an interesting Manhattan, but I think it would make a good uh, old fashioned. Maybe even a maybe even a bourbon mule maybe. I can I can I just wax poetically for a second about the cocktail that I have been on for almost two months now. When you say on, what do you mean? Oh man, I've been making it with everything I've got at the house, which is more than I have showed you before we started filming. Um, I went on kind of a bourbon sidecar binge, Bender. and oh <laughs> oh my goodness, I love Quantro. Didn't know how much I loved it. But Quantro, uh, yeah. I find triple sec fun in applications. I think next I'm jumping up to Grand Marnier, and I'm going to see how that plays in with all of these. But a bourbon sidecar, lemon, Quantro, a bit of simple syrup, uh, ice, shake, and then bourbon of your choice. But, man, the, the, the fun citrusy flavors that come out. Sometimes you get a whiskey that's really interesting and inviting, and and sometimes you get one that shuts the door in your face. <laughs> right. Um, hey, I have a weird question for you. Have you ever thought about, like, when you die? Yeah, all the time. 
What I mean, are you planning on getting cremated or, or buried? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, if we are, you know, my wife and I are planning on donating our bodies to science. If if I can get that to happen, it's it's weird in Nevada here. Like the only place that'll take your bodies uh, is apparently the in Reno, the university in Reno. For some reason, UNLV doesn't want to take it. They're not. They're just not set up for it. So I've been thinking about it, but I I kind of always was thinking like. If I got cremated, I could always have that smoking hot body I wanted. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. I make <laughs> for for new listeners. I like to start out with a dad joke or, or a terrible joke, and that 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 was that one. I would like to say, I would hope that my family would be wise enough. To turn me into soil. You know you can actually have your ashes in a, a pot that grows into a tree, right? So, what I have thought about doing mm -hmm. was turning myself into soil... plants huh see i would think you'd want to be somehow involved in like an oak or something and have that turn into a barrel for, for some whiskey no 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 this would be like no, we're no, drinking no, no, sean no no no, no, no. <laughs> here's why you see you plant yourself a tree you have a tree in a yard but you know what you do when you leave a home you leave the tree you don't take the tree with you so oh. what i want to be is a plant that is overbearing invasive i want to be an ivy i want to be turned so. into a plant that comes back every year <laughs> and you are stuck with it every year until you die <laughs> kind of like herpes i want to be the herpes of plants wow what is the herpes of plants i want to now now i need to google that I, herpes I spine. of plants that's what we're looking up josh thank you for running down that short spiral with me oh god what? don't look it up don't look it up <laughs> Don't look it up. And we're back. Did you literally type in herpes of plants? Did you type in herpes of plants? I gave the disclaimer. So, wait, wait. Did you, did you um, type in herp, herpes of plants? Herpes of plants. Because I just get plants. Okay. Uh, Josh has Internet Explorer. No. Fuck you. I have, I have Chrome, thank you very no. much. No, Not, uh, no, I, I, I don't have Chrome. Well, actually, yeah, I do have Chrome. So what I'll, yeah, what I'll say is, um, I want to be, I want to be a Firefox? constant <laughs> reminder to the people that I left behind that I'm gone and you'll never see me again. But I want you to look at something and remember <laughs> me every time you fucking look at it, because it's like you know what, most of my life I didn't spend physically attractive. So I'd like to be something nice to look at, but I'd also like to be overbearing and crush your soul every time you do look at me. <laughs> so that's that's my answer to that question. And I wanted oh, to man. I wanted to thank you for letting me go down that lane. Here's to the Nika. Or it is fueling these thoughts because goddamn, this is good shit. All right. Uh, oh. Since this is since this is a virtual uh, podcast here, we're we're in different states. Air clink, clink. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Yeah, it's getting better with it as it airs out with a couple of drops of water, but it's still not nearly as lovely. Um, so, actually, speaking of whiskey, you you also like to uh, self medicate sometimes with the with the weed. I have, I have on occasion. Yes, I wanted to get your take on the difference. Like, how does leaving aside the whole commercial side of things? you know, the weed business and, and all that. What, how do you feel, What what's different to you between weed versus whiskey? Are you talking about the effect of consuming one or the other? Or are you talking, yes. oh yes, the, yes, the difference in effect? Yeah, aside from just the munchies. 
Oh, oh, well, the munchies are a myth. I don't get the munchies. You know, I've had secondhand smoke uh, many times, thanks to going out and reviewing shows here. And I don't get munchies either. I get munchies from, like, I drank too much, I haven't eaten in five, six hours, that kind of thing. But maybe that's just us. I don't know. Anyway, but I was wondering, because I know you're, you know, you generally, you're not doing the weed because you like to escape reality so much as you, you're trying to relieve some sort of pain. Am I correct in saying that? Um... No, not really. The I guess what I'm really asking I, is, I get wh- my, which I one get, do you like better? I get my highest, like I, mm-hmm. I prefer to smoke uh, when I need to be really productive. Oh, interesting. Uh, when I need to get a bunch of shit done, I like to get extremely high. Because when I do, I can sit down and I can manage all of the thoughts that are going in my head. And I can categorize them and I can list them out and I can get everything into an order of this is what needs to happen now and here's what will take the least amount of time. Okay. And then I can categorize that and working into what are the long-term projects. I can't get there unless I smoke. I don't know how to get there sober and I'm I'm working on it. But I just can't sit there and be that – patient and introspective to really sit down and start writing and scheduling out things. I hate scheduling things out. I really don't like it. Um, maybe some of that, and going down a weird rabbit hole that uh, this will be fun for first time listeners. Uh, I play video games that specifically don't have time trials because I hate being timed in video games. I like to take my time and do the process correctly or as I know it. Being sped up to do it and to do it faster irritates me. Gotcha. But maybe that's my procrastinatory nature. Maybe that's me. uh, um, the, the The potential for failure that's there is alluring to me because I'm... It could expose me as a fraud. Like maybe it's the 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 imposter syndrome that I go through. I don't know, but it's always been a fun thing to kind of think about. Uh, but weed makes me more introspective, and alcohol makes me uh, more social. Yeah, and I, I mean, prefer, I've, I've seen I you on both. To be, yeah. I prefer to be more introspective, but if I need to be social. Give me a couple drinks and I will be right there with you and meandering and making fun and having friends. But I'm finding uh, through the use of both individually and now together that it there is a there is a blend that works for everybody. And it takes enough of the edge off from where I normally function that I can think and I can operate more effectively and I can operate more clearly. And it just like. I don't have to stop the workflow. I can keep working longer. Well, that's interesting. That kind of flies in the face of what most people assume stoners are like, which is like to just lay around and just be stoned. Right. And even if I'm, even if I'm getting extremely stoned and I'm not moving, I'm still playing a video game at a high caliber and my hand eye coordination is moving. Like even if my body's very still, it's almost like a, a path of meditation for me. It's repetitive motion in such a familiarity that I don't have to think about doing it. I'm faster with video games than I am with drums, and I went to school for drums, but I've got a longer history of video games. So, I, and this is kind of what led to led to this the other night. I was sitting down playing video games, and I just started deep breathing because I was I felt tense and I felt anxious, and it was because I had. A, about a beer and a half too many from where I was, from where I wanted to be. So m- I'm, I'm pretty good about calculating the cocktail that goes into my body. Okay. And so I'm off by about a beer and a half, and I sit there and I start doing this fucking Samsung Health breathing thing, and it's like counting me, you know, four seconds in, four seconds out, seven seconds in, seven seconds out, ten seconds in, ten seconds out. I got my heart rate resting from a 92, which was fucking not okay. 
because I was just sitting there hanging out from what I right. thought. And I deep breathed to 41 beats per minute. Wow. Like That's I, impressive. It more than half it. And it just, I sat there and I thought, why was I so agitated? That's what happens when I get too stoned. I really get introspective and I, and I think about my body and what kind of conditions it's in and what can I do to keep better care of it and things like that. When I get drunk, I don't care what I put into my body. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Uh, you ready for a question? Did, I answer, a qu did I answer that one? All yeah, right. totally. Okay. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, cause, cause, uh, listeners don't really probably know this. Um, my wife is like hospital allergic to any inhalation of weed smoke whatsoever. Vaping, not so bad, but like I, and personally for me, the smell of it kind of makes me sick to my stomach. So I, I don't partake, uh, but I can, I can tolerate being around it. So, but those are the reasons why I don't smoke. Uh, I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes. It just, my, my vice of choice is generally whiskey. Uh, but if you, I'd love, you know what, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think, if you do weed or, or whiskey or both, you know, how does it can affect you, you? Can you say that stuff on Patreon? Can you comment that kind of stuff? Or is it censored like Facebook it's, and it's, Twitter? It's legal, I'm sure. Okay. I hear, Did I heard some stuff on podcasts. Okay. But regardless, well, cool. all I want to know is. Good. Yeah, tell, yeah I'll, let me know what you think. Absolutely. Yeah, all I want to know is, if you want to let us know anything, if you want to ask anything, such as the, the listener question we're about to answer, Email us at two brains one bottle at yeah right man. <laughs> Cigars on the other hand, he, he has trouble with. <laughs> I'm good. Keep Noob. going. I don't want to ruin your ad read. It's all right. It's not so much an ad read as it is a plea for content. Listen, we'd love to hear from you. Um, questions, comments, whatever, and we'll do our best to answer any questions. Um, two brains one bottle at gmail dot com. That's the number two. Bottles, sorry, <laughs> it's the number two, brains, as in more than one brain, the number one, bottle, as in one bottle, at gmail.com. Um, Guys, two brains, one bottle, two, number, two brains, mm -hmm. one bottle, number one, dog off. Okay, I think, I think we got that. Do we? Uh, and that's how, that's where we got this question. Christine asks, and Sean used to be a professional cook, so this will be a particularly interesting you can only eat one food for the rest of your life what is it fuck um <laughs> i mean the the obvious answer for a lot of people is pizza because i can put whatever i want on it <coughs> and, and i honestly i feel okay with saying it can be a, like a category such as pizza or sandwiches or something but uh do honestly? Do I have to? Do I have to pay for it? I mean, I I don't. It's not really part of the question, but it I is, assume not. It is for me. Your <laughs> lobster thermidor, <laughs> caviar. Because you were talking about all the foods the last episode you were talking about. You'd love to write a cookbook and do all these foods you'd never tried. I know. This and... is where I'm having an issue. <laughs> but you can only do one of them. <laughs> I understand that. Because, like, honestly... Fuck me, Josh. You painted me into a fucking corner <laughs> for the sake of continuity. You, you fucked me, Josh. <laughs> hey, you know now what? Now I'm screwed. And I... here, here you go. Here's a callback to the last episode. You know what I would eat? One food for the rest of my life? Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Fresh out of a junkie's butt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. One food. One food? One food. Um I I mean I think the, I've got the, it. Okay. And I'm gonna I, I, I I'm gonna, gonna say something. I'm going to Go fucking ahead. you 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 know what? You tried to I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take a card out of the Jay Ryger playbook, and I'm gonna oh, make no. a Midwestern call, and I'm gonna say salad. You know why? Because you got leafy salad, you got mm -hmm. pasta salad, you got ham yeah. salad, you got fucking every kind of salad you can think of. Anything that's a culminate salsa is a salad. It's a tomato salad. 
Ah, you Christine, you didn't specify. Tomato and onion and yeah. garlic salad. You see, yeah, you just said one food. You didn't say ways one. You can yep. fucking say anything. So I'm going to go with Pizza salad. Pizza salad. Oh, I could have salad on pita bread or salad in a quesadilla or in a wrap. Mm-hmm. Then it's still a salad. The main you know course, the filling, the, the filling potential is mm-hmm. what it is. So I'm going to say a salad. You know what I was going to say? A salad with grilled steak. Still a salad. The grilled Booyah. steak is an accompaniment. No, I, I, I think I'm, I'm on that train. <coughs> I'm, on, I'm on the party with you. But I, kind of along the same vein, I was going to say tacos. Because it could be soft tacos. Could be, you know, you can a, a crepe could be a taco. I mean, you if you put it in between, if you put it in a thing that folds over, or rolls, you can have roll tacos. So, thanks, Christine. That was that was interesting. I I I go ahead. You're you're waving your finger at me. No, don't like tacos. No, you're wrong. You can't say that. You're 100% wrong. Christine, I'm sorry. We're going to have to take a couple minutes on this subject. No, man. You roll up a taco into a little circle, like a cigarillo. That is a fucking taquito, my friend. That is a taquito. Not a rolled taco. Nobody says rolled tacos. You know who says rolled tacos? The fucking... Gringos. The fucking shops who are owned by white people that employ Mexicans. There you go. Okay, you come got on, me. man. I was okay, if, if, like, if you can say tacos a... out of a truck should be like four inches. They have like you can hold them with three fingers, and that's it. You're just done. It's oh, gone, dude. We have every so often, every like couple weeks, my my work will buy us lunch, and every so often, we hear these magic words: the taco cart is coming, and these guys roll up in a truck. They set up a plancha. They set up. You know, mm. like like they set up the the tables with the sterno underneath. Mm. They set up a, the beans and the mm. Spanish rice or Mexican rice, and they have. Oh my God! Mm-hmm. It's pastor, mm. chicken, mm. steak, mm. flour, and corn tortillas. They got your oh. cheese. They got the whole little. They got the little the little you know like bar there full of the spicy this and the the, the little pico de gallo and stuff, and. The best thing is, I go out, I get three, I get one of each kind of taco, it's delicious, and then I go back, and I always, I, I kind of regret doing this every single time, because it's like, that that tip the scales, it's too much now, but I, I then ask for a chicken quesadilla, and what they do, is he makes, first, a round shell, basically, of the cheese, he melts that, and then he puts that inside the tortilla, with the, 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 oh god, dude! And you're just you, you eat a taco when you eat something and there's grease running out and you don't care and that's that it's that good. And when that happens, man, I make sure I work <laughs> out f- at, before lunch. I make sure like I'm, I'm so goddamn happy about the taco. So that's why I went to tacos. I was like the taco cart. But you're right. I should have said something like soup or you know salad. Oh, or, soup's a good one too because soup gets into stew. all sorts of weird shit. Yeah. When does a soup become a stew? Chunks? Is that what makes a, a stew? Is it the cooking method? The size of the meat. I, I heard a good one on a. I was listening to a podcast today. Uh, the Vidiots, which are three fam- funny British guys, and uh, <laughs> they answered a question somebody asked. Uh, what is when is a nap? become sleeping like when what's the difference when is when is it not taking a nap anymore but you're actually going to sleep anything over and, 20 minutes no what, what they came up with was no it's the, it's the intent when you lay minutes. down it's the intent when you lay down if you say i'm going to bed for the night that's you're going to sleep if you say i'm going to take a little little nap i'm going to recharge you know and i think where i where the gray area comes is I meant to lay down for a nap, and six hours later, I woke up feeling like I got run over by a truck. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so so let's find the inverse of that. Well, first of all, did we answer Christine's question? I feel like we did. About the soup and stew? No, about one food for the rest of your life. Yeah, I think salad, I'm going to go with salad, because I, 
I need my macronutrients. I need to fucking eat variety. Yeah. If, I mean, I can't. The wise I can't live off of. Like the, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't live off the same shit every day. I fucking hate leftovers. I do. Right. I'm a spoiled right. little princess Brit bitch, and I shouldn't be eating the fucking portion sizes that I'm making. And I need to fix that. And if I could fix that, I could eat nice things that I like more often. But. Jesus, I I want everything and I have nothing. So when I buy things, I buy too much because I don't know how to live within my means. Ah, there it is. That's there's where it is. That sucks. Okay. So soup is thin and the stew is thick. To answer your question, a Um, soup is thin and the stew is thick. But what about like gazpacho (laughs) is is not supposed to be thin, but that's considered gazpacho is a soup. But it's not supposed to be thin. Gazpacho is a soup, right? Am I wrong? Isn't gazpacho supposed to be almost like a smoothie texture? Also, no. is a smoothie a soup? Smoothie texture. I've never had gazpacho, so I just, I've only seen it on the. So we have plate. clear soups like vegetable soup, chicken noodle soup, beef barley soup, clear stock or broth, thickened, not thickened, uh, and then we have cream soups, pureed soups, bean soups, chowders, bisques. Chilies. Um, most cream soups come with a velouté or a bechamel, or it's thickened with a roux. But a stew, stew usually needs to have braising. Ah, braising. There you go. Oh, yeah, So it's yeah, the quality. Yeah. It's the quality of the meat. It's the yeah. It's the composure. You don't brown of the meat. meat before. Yeah, you don't brown meat to put it in a soup. No, you brown meat to get a crust and get flavor because you're going to cook the shit out of that meat. You're going to cook it down until there's nothing left. Right. Okay, there's your stew. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So there you go. So, Christine, I hope we answered your question. And if you have questions you want to, you know, send us, uh, you want us to, in a roundabout way, answer, (laughs) go ahead and email us at twobrainsonebottle at gmail.com. Sean, you know what time it is? Just making sure there's not another favorite food that's coming across here that's going to, like, jump out at me and, like... Boston cream pie every day for the rest of my life. No, I'm making sure there's not, like, there's no, there's no... Because I justify it with what can I live on sustainably? Like, that's mm. that's where I'm at as an adult now. I have to think about it from a sustainable point of view. I can't think of, like, the thing right. that tastes the fucking best. I mean... You, you could, I would you kill say, myself. I would, if you, I would if you absolutely talk about, fucking kill myself with the choice. And right? that's well, where I'm you, like, oh, I'm a bad eater. Well, Sean, there is an obvious answer if you want you want, you want, want nutrients, you want a, you know, all that stuff. A smoothie. You can do a lot of things with smoothies. And and it's, you know, you, you can put a lot of things into a, a blender. Apparently, Zac Efron, when he was uh, on the set of um, Baywatch, to keep him, he, he literally was... Blender, blenderizing chicken breasts and drinking them to get the amount of protein he needed. I couldn't. Ugh. No, yeah. man, I need texture. Yep. Texture. I gotta. I can't do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I you, gotta have shape. My uh, the right. stuff I eat has to like have shape. I can't have everything blitzed. Oof. That's yeah. I'm sorry. I can't eat baby food. Excuse me. It's okay. Oh, God, no, I, sorry. I get, sorry, I had to okay. hurt your delicate little ears. Oh, <laughs> such a fucking heel. Such a fucking nefarious point of view to take. God, so polarizing. Ugh, oh, oh, fucking babies. Uh, all right. I'm saying all right, this keep... to no one. No one's reacting. <laughs> no like, one's here. No one's you... listening. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I'm reacting Jeez. to someone who might have a point of view from the, you know, I don't. I don't know, man. I'm creating my own head cannon. I'm creating yeah, right. the, the the fans that I'm going to be arguing. By the way, if you're if you are listening to this and you want to react, I believe you could drop a comment, and uh, you're probably a patron, so thank you for that. Uh, go ahead and leave leave your remarks on the Patreon page. But um, Sean, I believe it's time for weird news. Are weird you ready news. for weird news? Weird news. Weird news. It's time for weird news. There's weird stuff on the internet, and I found it, and we're going to figure it out together. All right. <laughs> Best intro music ever on the... God, we're so good. Uh, so, 
They're over in Denver, speaking of weed. Making a change. Wait, we're making a segment change or making a whiskey change? All right. I'm still on Four Roses. Still not as impressed as I was with Kilburn. I love the Nika. I fucking love it. It is the best whiskey I have had in a long time. And it's affordable. At $70, the bottle could be shaped better. I'm not going to fucking lie. I'm a little pissed <laughs> still about the bottle. It's still a stupidly shaped bottle. We're being very clear about this. This should be a $55 whiskey. And it, it, you should get deducted points for that bottle. I'm sorry. You should lose 20 points. bucks. This is $20 worth of inconvenience. This is $20 worth of spilled juice that people will not get back. Um, you lose. You get nothing. Good day, sir. No, you get you get something. You always get something with me. That's the problem. I can't fucking say no to anybody. <laughs> I'm a show. That's fine. Give me money. Give me advertising. Give me ads to read. I will money, do it. Money, money. Um, but now I've moved on to the Doers 15. Doers so, now that you're cracking open the doers, we're going to go to Denver for a, for an appropriately macabre kind of weird news story here. Oh, no. Uh, well, yeah. Well, this is the Joshua you're drinking Irish. right sad hour. The, you're drinking Irish whiskey, and I'm, I'm drinking a depressing whiskey. So I'm drinking blended scotch. I just thought... Let me put this. It's been on the late show with Stephen Colbert. This particular story. So how you know how sad could it be? Yeah. So what happened was a funeral home owner named Megan Hess apparently <sighs> sold loved ones' body parts without consent and has already been criminally indicted in the case. But a box containing human heads was stolen from a truck in Denver. I've seen so this movie. To... No, that's uh, eight heads in a duffel bag. Yes! Yes. Put put your hands up. No. <laughs> you do it. You do a better impression of him. Why, 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 why not? I don't want to. Christopher Walken. But um, apparently there's something called a body broker in Arizona that was, uh, that was waiting on these heads that got stolen there was oh no i'm sorry the, the heads were destined for scientific research but uh that's just weird they lost a box of heads like who i i'd like to think that whoever stole it didn't know what was in the box but the real question is like were those heads in the box with consent were they you know whose heads were they and how much? How much does a head go for? But yeah, that Denver, not just for weed. It was a training event. What? The oh, they, they were on their way to a training event. The theft occurred sometime between two thirty p.m. local time and March second at two thirty a.m. on March third. The Denver Police Department said that the box containing donated tissues belonged to Science Care. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I see that. Science Care said in a statement late Monday that the sealed box containing the heads was stolen from a secured truck operated by third parties specializing in logistics of donated tissues. The truck had been in the process of returning the heads to Science Care after a medical training event when unknown individuals illegally broke into the truck and robbed it. So somebody fucking broke into a truck and stole heads. Like if they stole something, they didn't know what they were getting. Or, or you know what? They probably thought they were getting organs for you know to sell. And On the then black they got market, heads. you think this is a black market scheme? I th I think they thought they were going to be a black market. Apparently, heads are worth at least five hundred bucks. That's fucking weird. That you know that. <laughs> this article, this article, buddy. But uh, apparently, uh, based on. Fucking weird, but you well, know that. Well, actually, actually, I say at least 500 bucks, but the attorney who's trying to track, the, who's chasing this case, believes that the heads could bring in between 2,000 and 5,000 each. Which suddenly makes it a lot more re believable that somebody stole them on purpose to sell. Which, again, like, I get, okay, the eyes, the. What else from a head are you going to sell on the black market that could be like reused? 
Somebody needs a new nose? New tongue? I mean, we should talk about permission as well. Even if a loved one expressly gave you permission to keep their skull after a death, there's a right. chance abuse of corpse laws would prevent the funeral home from returning it over. True, true. I mean, I know the cheek is supposed to be really tender. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Come on, you know that a lot of people that eat, eat meat love the, the cheek meat. It's like the best from a cow or whatever. <laughs> wow, <Yes>. man. <laughs> Slunch a bitch. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I'll say, I of all the speechless. shit I expected us to talk about, that wasn't something that was... I made him speechless. <laughs> That's gross. I know. I know. That's my my, my problem. gross. I've been listening to a lot of cr true crime podcasts about, like, Ed Gein and stuff. Do you know who Ed Gein was? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, he was well. falsely attributed to being the inspiration behind the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That is true, uh, and at the same at the same time, he boy, you talk about pff, messed up by your upbringing. Um, anyway, moving on. This is not a true crime pro true crime podcast. We're not going to talk about that. No, and true yet crimes, we're talking about true crimes. Never been my thing. I always yet, found that you know we have so much bad shit happening now and in the moment that we shouldn't really dwell on. Well, not really dwell. Oh God. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get attacked by the true crime community. I'm gonna shut the fuck up, and I'm gonna I didn't have to think about this before, but we're gonna start vastly, broadcasting these things. You're vastly I overestimating really have our to audience. Start thinking about what I'm saying before I say it. I'm not gonna you're say that. I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna hey, hey, unedited. Walk Remember, away. This, is, this is an unfiltered, unedited podcast. Oh say no, I'm want. fucking filtering myself now. <laughs> you're gonna hear oh. it. Oh no! I know, I know the groups of people you should and shouldn't say shit to because I've watched too many podcasts. No, I'm not fucking going near that community. Not saying it. Not saying a fucking thing. All right. Well, from two to two thousand to five thousand dollars a head to two point nine million dollars worth of meth was seized at the California border, disguised as onions, and I. Looking at the picture, it looks like bags of onions, and I, I just I have questions. <laughs> like, oh shit! Got it, got it. Oh, it's on Patreon. We're fine. Yeah. So. Yeah, canine team totally was like, you know, bing, math, <laughs> small globes with, a, oh, you know, I could see how at first glance, they kind of look like onions they in the bag. They need the mesh bags, the, the, the mesh, like you got to tear through them to get to them bags. They, Those... they did. They have, them. what they did was they had a bunch of actual bags of white onions and then they had these, they had these little white balls of meth in there, little packages that in instead of just you know the driver is a mexican citizen uh, arrested for alleged drug smuggling attempt and turned over to federal agencies now that is definitely not a like a lot of effort went into this it's a uh, over 1300 pounds of meth uh disguised as onions i just wow i just thought i'd go to something a little more conc like cut and dried this is, it's just weird. Like, I never would have thought bags of onions for, for methamphetamine, you know? Onion meth. It's the new thing hitting the streets. You know, those onions will give you a whole new reason to cry. Wow. Dun dun. <laughs> dare, <laughs> dare hire me. I will write doom scrolly shit that will just make you come in your fucking pants. Just give me a Whoa. writing job. Your Jeez, platform good... sucks. You could do a better job of talking about is, drugs to kids. Wait, is is dare still a thing? Yeah, 
there's just shit at their jobs. They need a whole fucking rebranding. If you I know can, they need. Oh, they need some if, sweet, if, sweet if I could write a book. To, oh, continuation from last week's podcast. If I could write a book tomorrow, it would be Dare: A Better Guide to Do Your Fucking Jobs. Kids One need information. <laughs> they don't need your fucking weird, like helicopter parenty overbearing fucking opinion based bullshit they need fact they need data and they need testimonials and that's what everybody needs and i feel like that's the future medium for books which is why i'm writing a book on it you're welcome i'm glad i'm going to set a trend there. mine's not going to be done until five years into the trend but that's how would, you do it but <laughs> it will be it will be it will be done well instead of done first Never be the first one to do anything. Sean Flume, ladies and gentlemen, setting trends about five years too late. <laughs> That's right. No, five years too early. Yeah, I'm close enough. I guess. So, uh, I guess it's really having an idea for a trend five years too early, while everybody else does the work of making the trend happen. In which case, it null and voids my suggestion of the trend because somebody else could have, could have as easily come up with the same idea that I did. I don't hold forbearance and ownership over the thought. See, now I'm go. depressed. Thanks, Josh. What else are we talking well, about? Beer. You're drinking beer. You're drinking an IPA, right? I am drinking a, oh, great question. Stone Brewing Company, Fear Movie Lions, Hazy Double IPA, 8.5%. Uh, I'm a fan of Stone. I enjoy them as a brewery. They they make some stuff I'm not so happy about. But what is up in the world of beer? Give me a story. Tell me all about it. So how much would you say that you, you love beer? Oh, a love? Well, like... Like, like you really like beer, right? Do I? What? What is? What would I? Oh, you're asking what Klondike bar would I do? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, for a beer or two. Uh, what would you do for a no. beer or two? You're asking me Did, basically how much I love them. To basically. to show to show my love, what would I do for them? What would I do for beer? Oh, um, I don't know. Um, fucking. Go to a separate store for you. That level. I'd even let you hold the remote control. So, no. Florida man. No, no, my hearing's too shit. If I can't hear, I, I'm right. sorry. I'm not going to be invested in it. So I got to be able to ride the volume, and I can't hear shit. Okay, so Florida man. Ready? Got to go, Florida, Florida man. man. Yeah, Tampa, Florida. Security camera video shows the moment a man was struck by an SUV as he exited a convenience store in Florida, and a, 20, a 21-year-old woman meant to hit the brake, but accidentally pressed the accelerator moments before she plowed into the plantation pantry on Hutchinson Island, taking one man with her. And you can see him, like, he's hit kind of around his waistline, which sucks, right? Who knows what kind of damage is happening? He's thrown back into the store. And he was transported to the hospital with injuries to his face and a broken glass. He's uh, expected to recover. Hooray. He was talking and was in pretty good spirits. And the whole time he kept asking deputies if the beer he just purchased was okay. <laughs> and I thought, for some reason, I thought, that's Sean. Is my whiskey okay? Is my, is my beer okay? Um... It doesn't say whether the beer was okay in the article. I'm disappointed. You know what's funny? A 90 degree laundry chute? <laughs> I stole it from a commercial. I'm giving the impact long enough to free fall. Okay. 90 foot laundry drop? Long enough time to free fall? That's I get it, I get it. No, I said a 90 degree laundry shoot. Oh! That is funny. <laughs> I got you. Anyway, what's funny? I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I was trying to see what you were looking at, and I came across a Florida man that has died after crashing his car into an 11-foot alligator. <laughs> Good hell! 
Oh, it's an old story, but apparently some guy in Florida threw a live alligator through a Wendy's drive through window. Like it's from 2016 or something. I was going to use that one. I told my wife and she's like, oh, I, I heard that. I know that story. That's old. And I looked at the date and I was like, sure enough, 2016. Thanks, honey. 2022. Man crashed in noon into an 11 foot alligator. Yeesh. In Lithia, about 25 miles east of Tampa. Lithia? Never heard of that. I think you're making it up. Oh, my he goodness. Had, uh, it was March 26th, 2022. That's it. That's all I know. Right on. Well, March hopefully, so there you go. Hope, uh, ho- hopefully, uh, <laughs> is my beer okay guy is going to be okay? And uh, I just... Yeah, I guess, I, beer, I guess beer guy, you know, I guess he gets a nominal mention, but... Jesus. It, it it just struck me like right out of some comedy movie or whatever. It's like, is my beer okay? <laughs> you know? did, it, did it strike you as hard as it struck that 11-foot alligator? I don't know. I wasn't there. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today, I believe. Sean, do you have anything to tell the listeners that they need to know for the rest of the month? We're done. Oh, coming up on an hour. Time flies when you're having fun talking yeah. about exploding cinnamon rolls, but that was episode one. I, uh, well, that was the last episode. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry How about, about this episode? Uh, you know what? I think if if you can give one five word phrase piece of advice to somebody, what would it be? I, I'll, I'll lead with mine. Here's my advice. Just don't make it worse. Whatever it is, don't make it worse. Try to make things better. Get it done, then improve. Yeah. I like it. That, that Yes, because sometimes you got to get it done. The, you know... So much, you know, throw the, not get, so much by the get book. Get through the get first done. draft. Yeah. Thank, yes. That's the hardest part of any sort of creative outlet at all. Or That's just also getting five. anything done. Get through the first draft. Uh, hey, look at you. A twofer. Nice. I got nothing else to add, sir. Um, shall we say goodbye? Wow. Nice. Thanks for listening to Two Brains, One Bottle. I didn't actually say goodbye yet. <laughs> but uh, if you're not a patron... Now you, have it, now you have it for the end. Nice. Thank you for listening to Two Brains, One Bottle. We really do appreciate you. Uh, without you guys, we're talking and yelling into the abyss. But um, other than that, yeah. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time here on Two Brains, One Bottle, and hopefully over on my YouTube channel, Room 6. Um, now! Ba-da-ba-ba-da-bum! <laughs>